What's up, Brewing Peeps? This is Brewing Daddy here, and we're about to bottle up some Irish Red Ale. This has been fermenting for a few weeks now. It actually, it's went a little longer than two weeks. It's more, a little more like three. Got it delayed on bottling this one, but we're, we got everything set up here. Fermenter elevated. It's been sitting for about 15, 20 minutes. We already got all our bottles and our sanitation solution over here. Got our filler. It's soaking. Matter of fact, all this is ready to pull out. Got our capper and we got our fizz drops. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out our filler and let's drain everything out of it. It should be ready to go. We just use a, a water and iodine solution. Let's get this on here. Sometimes this can be tricky if you haven't done it a few, about once or twice, but we're good. And I like to just drape it over the top just to keep it out of the way. So let's get all our bottles out. We'll let them air dry for a couple minutes. <clears throat> this solution, you don't have to rinse. It's an iodine solution. It's like using dishwashers, commercial setups. So. I always run all of my bottles to the dishwasher. I rinse them really good afterwards, after drinking the beer. Make sure I get all the crud out the bottom because every bottle of beer will have a little bit of sediment in the bottom. So I don't, I don't like leaving that behind. But uh, I'll rinse them real good with hot water and then stick them in the dishwasher and run them to the dishwasher. And that usually does it now. I'll check them just to make sure there's nothing left down in the bottom. If there is, I'll use the bottle brush on them. Normally I don't have to, as long as I rinse them out as soon as it's hot water right after uh, drinking the beer. I never drink out of my bottles. I always pour it into a frosted glass. Nothing wrong with drinking it out of the bottle, but here, you got all that sediment that'll be in the bottom and when you pour it, just pour it real slow and you can avoid getting that sediment in your glass and then you ain't got to worry about it. But if you drink it out of the bottle, you're going you're gonna to be drinking everything. Although, <laughs> I usually don't waste the uh, little bit that's left. It's kind of yeasty tasting, but uh, my last bottle. Got our caps in here too. So you want to sanitize everything. Caps, bottles, your filler. I'm using red caps because this is an Irish red ale. So, And uh, everything's been sanitized as far as my surface. I use Clorox wipes. I wipe everything down. I'm just kind of a clean freak when it comes to that. I think that's why I've, I don't think I've ever had a bad batch. I've had some that hasn't turned out great. You know, they, uh, I, I've never had one that didn't, firm, uh, didn't ferment or carbonate. I'm not bragging, but I pay a lot of attention to sanitation. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end. Got one cap left. So we're going to let all this air dry for a few minutes. And all right, that's all our cap. So we're going to let all this air dry for a few minutes and, uh, We'll come back and we'll start, uh, we'll put all our fizz drops in. I'm thinking we're gallon marks right there. This is probably going to be 11 beers in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put in like 11. I might do 10 and then wait. And if I get to the last two bottles, put them in. I'm going to put the fizz drops in first and then we'll start filling them up and then cap them. So we'll be right back. All right, we are back. These have air dried for a few minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and start putting fizz drops in them. Like I said, I'm only gonna do, I'll do 10 of them. I'm gonna set the two aside that I'm not gonna do. This is probably the least fun part of the one, because sometimes these don't fit. This looks like a good batch of them there. Pretty consistent. Sometimes the size of them are not always consistent. There's two stuck together. So, you'll get that. <laughs> so 
Sometimes you'll have one that'll do that, that'll get stuck. That one kind of turns sideways, so that's what happened there. Usually they'll drop right in. I hate taking these out of here while I'm filming because I know every time I touch this bag, I cringe when I'm editing video. But there's really no way around it. I'm trying to be sanitary. I don't want to handle stuff anymore than I have to. But I cringe probably as much as you do. So sorry about any wrinkling noises from the bags. All right, so we're ready to roll here. Let's get our airlock out. And let's turn on our spout. Got that beautiful red, Irish red L coming out. We'll let it kind of fill up our tube. It's not really gonna fill up very well until we depress the plunger in the bottom. Let's roll with this. Uh, first little bit looked a little hazy, but it looks a little clearer now. So we'll see. Let's see how many we get of this. Skeptical. Uh, I'm thinking 11. This turned out pretty nice. Uh, you can see the color. It's really a deep red. Beautiful deep red. I like the way it looks. As far as smell, it doesn't really have a distinct smell. I can. It smells like, you know, ale, but uh, it's not very strong. Sometimes as soon as I start filling the bottle, I can smell it. This one, plus my sinuses may be acting up, but this one doesn't have a really strong smell to it. I think this is going to be a good beer. I think this is going to be a stronger beer. Uh, but probably similar to like the Innkeeper that I did, that Innkeeper, oh my gosh, that was a strong beer. I would say probably close to 8%. I know I, I could drink one of those and I could feel it. It was, uh, it just, it just had a kick. It remind me of uh, a beer they make in the Philippines. I think it's called Red Horse. It reminds me of it. It tastes, uh, I think that's an ale too. It's like a red ale, I believe. And it, it's probably around 8% alcohol. It's a good beer, but it's strong. Yeah, that innkeeper. I wonder if this is gonna be similar to that. It look, that, that beer looks, the red uh, horse that they make in the Philippines looks very similar to this one in color. So, and the smell, it smells similar to it. That's the first thing I thought of when I smelled it was Red Horse. My wife is from the Philippines, so they like to have parties and get togethers. And trust me, I've drank probably everything you can imagine from the Philippines. <laughs> Only I haven't had Tuba yet, the uh, coconut liquor that they make. I want to try that. One of these days I'm gonna end up over there visiting. She hasn't been home 13 years, so we're due. But, uh, I go over there, I'll, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll be there for a few weeks. I have to do a Brewing Daddy remote filming or something. Let me go around trying some beers there and shoot some video for the channel or something. We'll see. We'll see. It's a big trip, so. All right, so down to beer number five. Wow, this looks so clear. Look how pretty that looks. The tube, beautiful. I love it when beers turn out like this. It's just fantastic. You can smell it. This thing fermented really nicely. When it gets clear like that, you know you got a good beer. You got a really good beer. And I tell you, uh, that first, that very first one had some like cloudiness to it. The first, like not the first entire beer, but that first, I don't know, probably uh, the first bit of what was in the tube for some reason was a little cloudy. So we're about at the halfway mark and this is beer number six. Heck, I, I think we're definitely gonna get 11, might get 12. So I'm probably gonna have to drop another fizz drop here. 
not a not a big issue. So this is one of those another morning bottling episode. If you're wondering why I'm not drinking a beer, uh, I actually got to go to the eye doctor here shortly. So now, Brian, even though Brew and Daddy wears really cool shades, Brew and Daddy doesn't have 20/20 vision. So yeah. Fortunately, I wear contacts, but uh, yeah, I got to go get the uh, eyes checked. So this is looking wonderful. All right, so well, we're down to just a few more bottles left. This thing's looking very beautiful. And had to tilt the fermenter but I'll happily do that. Seems like this is moving along pretty quickly. It's a beautiful beer, excited, excited to drink this one. So after this recipe, we only have one recipe left and it is, yesterday was the 4th of July. So it's hot as the Dickens. That's why I'm in here bottling early in the morning because I'm in my garage and it's hot as Hades here. But, uh, We're going to pause our brewing for just a few minutes until the hot weather gets behind us. Focus on some other stuff. I got a lot of content though uh, that has not been put out yet. That's still, I'm working on editing. So uh, I plan to brew that five gallon batch. I don't want any beer recipes left. I want to get them all out of my hair. You know, literally get them out of my hair. But, uh, yeah, I got one five gallon batch left, Northern Brewers, a Kolsch, and I'm looking forward to brewing that. I wanna, I haven't done a five gallon batch in a while. I'm gonna bottle it. I got a lot of leftover fizz drops, so I'm gonna use those up. Man, I might get, I don't know, it's just looking like 11. This is looking like 11. So I'm gonna have to put a fizz drop in bottle there might do it afterwards but now I can start so I can smell this beer now no I couldn't I couldn't smell it earlier but I can smell it now anyways uh, while we're filling this last bottle uh, I know we've mentioned this in our previous videos but I'm going to mention it again briefly I'm not going to go into detail but we are we are doing a group cruise next summer in June on the Carnival Vista uh, Vista has a brewery on board. We're going to tour the brewery. We're going to get together, have some great beers together. And you might even get a photo op with Brewing Daddy. But uh, if you're interested in seeing what that's all about, go to brewingcruise.com. That's brewingcruise.com. And uh, there'll be a link there. I think there's a link in the top that says group cruise also. You can click that. And there's a link towards the bottom of the page. But uh, you can join us, get the cheers package, have up to 15 beers a day, and you won't have to pay anything additional except for the package costs and the cost of the cruise. And they got some great beers, Red Frog, uh, Red Frog Pub uh, Brewery beers, and they got Guy's Pig and Anchor beers. So I don't... I don't know. Should I, should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? I don't know. I'm going to try. Let's see. Let's see what happens. This is going to be gnarly. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit gnarly. I can't believe I'm going to do this, but it's okay. I'm a hardcore beer drinker, so. Oh yeah, this looks so bad. I don't know if I'm gonna bother putting a fizz drop on this one. Eh, probably shouldn't. Eh, it's already like, I don't know, we're almost full. Uh, let's raise up the fermenter, see if we can get the rest of this out of here. At least I'll know the one that doesn't have much in it, which one it is. All right, 
shouldn't have done that, I don't believe, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get any more. Gosh, I really pushed it there. All right, so we pushed the limits, the beer bottle limits. That, that bottle's only got about that much in it. Normally, I would not do that, but I'll roll the dice with it. it it's going to be gnarly. I'll be able to tell which one it is. I got 12. I can't believe it. It's like a gift from the beer gods, and you get more than you're expecting. And I filled these, like, all the way up with the filler in, so they drop down to about right there. That's where they end up. This one, gosh, this beer smells so good. I love the way a good brew smells. This one's only about right there. So we'll know, we'll know which one that one is. All right, so time to put some caps on these bad boys. So we've got our capper here. Go ahead and get started with our red caps. And we'll, we'll bottle up the first one as this one that has got full of, it's full of crud that nobody would drink but me. Uh, I'll be able to tell because I, I pay attention to how much is in the bottle. I'll be able to tell that that's the the one, and I'll know it'll, it'll have a whole lot of sediment in the bottom, but that's okay. It'll be a good beer. It probably tastes better than the rest of them. Might taste a little extra yeasty because that's that's what you're you know you're pulling up a lot of the yeast and sediment of the uh, the uh, malt extract and any hops that's all that's there it's solid particles it's just going to be hops malt extract and yeast a lot of yeast you can uh if you say you pour this out into a glass and that last little tiny bit that's in there if you drink it which i do sometimes lots of times because i don't like wasting anything and I kind of like the taste of it. It's very yeasty tasting. So out of all the one gallon batches I have ever brewed, this is only the second time that I have gotten 12 bottles. How about that? Out of many, many, I don't know how many dozens I've done so far, but quite a few. Uh, I'm about to say, gosh, I hope I have enough caps, <laughs> but I do. I like it when a plan comes together. But anyways, we were talking about brewing crews. Check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun next summer. Join us. Let's have some beers together. Let's talk about brewing. Let's go drink at some of the great bars and pubs that are going to be on the Turks and Caicos and in Aruba and Curacao. That's the ports. Nothing like a fine Caribbean beer. All right. Speaking of fine beers, we got 12 fine beers here bottled up. Irish Red Ales that look wonderful. You know, we do got one gnarly one. We'll save that for last. <laughs> we'll make sure we don't open that as the test beer in two weeks. So these are going to sit in a, in a dark room with... They're going to go in the box. Like the beer bottles come in, actually, is where they go in my household. But that's where they're going to go. Room that stays around 70 degrees, two weeks. We're going to crack one of these open. I normally, before I film opening one of these, and I suggest that you do this as well, uh, test one before you move all these in the fridge. Test one. And what I have found also is let your beer age as long as possible in the bottle outside of the fridge. In other words, don't put all these, you know, even if you test one and it's the first, you want to test and make sure it's fully carbonated because sometimes it takes a little bit longer to carbonate. So I wait two weeks. I'm going to crack one open. I'll drink it, test it, see how bubbly it is. If it looks good, then I'll, I'll go ahead and open one for y'all on the film on camera uh, and if it doesn't then I'll give it maybe another week and pretty much every single time I've done that it fully carbonates some beers aren't as carbonated as, as others uh, this one's probably gonna be very carbonated most of the 
darker beers like this that I've brewed have turned out to have really good carbonation. Actually, the lighter, the ones I brew with uh, uh, dry malt extract usually have a little less carbonation. Why, I don't know. Maybe because of the malt. But anyways, uh, so do that. I recommend leaving these in until the day before. Leaving these in your box or wherever you're putting them to age at, at room temperature because the yeast is working right now. You know, it's, uh, we put those fizz drops in, so the yeast is working and it is uh, gonna create your carbonation. But I recommend uh, letting these age in the bottle and they'll taste a lot better. Uh, the, I found, I've made recipes where it was a five gallon batch and I had a lot of bottles, 50 plus bottles. And the first dozen or so I drank were okay, they were good. But when I got to that last dozen, they were even better. And you could just tell there was a big difference between the first dozen I drank and the last dozen. Uh, I would say, you know, estimate maybe a 30%, 40% increase in the quality of the beer. So it's definitely worth aging them. All right, so we'll see you in two weeks. We're gonna open these up and we're gonna test one for you and show you what it looks like. We'll see you then. We are back. We've got our frosted glass here. We've got our Irish red ale nice and frosty in the bottle and we got our bottle opener we're going to crack this open and try it out and see how it turned out we've got a good hiss definitely some carbonation there beautiful beautiful dark red color lots and lots and lots of carbonation so really fermented well carbonated well Nice clear brew. Smells really good too. Not overly strong on the odor or smell. I should say smell, <laughs> not odor. Uh, look how dark and reddish that looks. First time I've done a red, Irish red ale, but really good carbonation. Beautiful beer, perfect head. As I was pouring it, it had a really good head. It's kind of subsided. You can see, if I can get it close enough to the camera, the bubbles and the nice carbonation. Looks really, really good. Let's take a whiff of it. Smells wonderful, smells perfect. Let's see how it tastes. Wow, a lot smoother than I thought. In my mind, I thought this would taste a lot like the Innkeeper Ale. It does taste like it, but not as strong or not as much of a bite. Uh, this probably, I haven't me I didn't measure it in the fermenter, but I'm guessing maybe around four and a half, five percent alcohol. Just don't taste it, kind of, I can, I can kind of taste it. Another look at it though. Beautiful, beautiful color, really clear. Not very hazy. Lots of carbonation, really smooth taste. I, I like this beer. This would definitely be one that I would brew again. All right. Well, we're glad you joined us for the bottling of this Irish Red Ale. We got more brews on the way. We're gonna be taking a little bit of a break for the rest of the summer. It's pretty hot right now. And like we've told you before, we brew in our garage. So this is gonna be our little hiatus for a little bit. But we got some content that we'll be putting together during our time we're not brewing. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but we are going to put out a, a video. It's not brewing, but it's something else. But it'll be quite enter entertaining. Uh, but we'll see you soon. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel. Check out BrewingDaddy.com. And don't forget to visit More Beer, our sponsor. We're going to be brewing up their stuff once we return from our summer break. Morebeer.com. We'd like to know what you'd like us to sample for you. So if you have a chance, check out their website. Let us know what you'd like us to brew. Uh, we'll be buying up a bunch of their recipes and uh, we'll, we'll do any suggestion you have. Peace out, people. We'll see you next time.